On this week's episode, Thad Danielson makes another visit to help us shape the garbage. Then, we'll finally get a look at Arabella's first plank getting fit into place. The first thing we had to sort out was exactly how high we were going to go with the garboard. We wanted to make it as tall as possible without having an unreasonable amount of material for backing out. So Steve drew the curves of each frame along one piece of wood to get a look at all of them together at once. That's what we come up with. So this is the same width as our stock we milled up, so this is inch and three quarter, yeah. which is what we just milled. So then to still be able to get inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter. Ten would be there. And then nine and a half is right there. It's probably not a bad plan. And that doesn't seem like a crazy amount of no. backing out to do at no. all. No, it's just playing in the edge off of it. So, after settling on nine and a half inches for the garboard height, it was time to copy the plank shape from the boat to the plank. Do you have any boards? To get the shape transferred, we'll use something called a spiling batten. Basically, spiling is a way of recording marks for a large complex shape on a board that is smaller than what you are measuring. By using straight edges to mark lines and distances, you can then transfer those marks to the plank and draw them out in an exact shape. Did you got a yardstick? So as you can see here, lines are drawn and distances recorded from the straight edge onto the board we're using. More the more marks you make, the more accurate the transfer will be. Okay. And then we then we need to unclamp it and push it that way. Since the stern end has no curve, we only need to trace this one mark from the square. And as the corner of the spiling batten is touching the corner of the rabbit. We'll use this corner itself for the next reference point. We can lay that out on a piece of wood and see what it looks like. And you have to go away from you. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. That's pretty good. And I'm just marking the end out here. Yeah. Gone For the curve of the stem, we will transfer the marks we made with a straight edge, which end up making a series of points that we can then fare to get the shape. We didn't go high up enough on the stem to finish the curve, so we had to get the board back onto the boat before going any further.
what we want is a straight edge here. Once we have a perfectly straight line marked for the top of the garboard, we're all set to start cutting it out. So we got a pretty good glue line there, what do you think? I guess so. Nice. Yep, we got a chipmunk. What are you looking for? The port side garboard needed another scarf joint before we could proceed, so we put some stock through the bandsaw in the power planer. We didn't have much left ourselves, so we decided to call it a day. There was plenty left to do before this board was up on the boat. We had a little bit of a mad dash to get ready for Thad yesterday. Uh, so it's kind of a late night the other night, getting the plank scarfed up. And then yesterday morning before we showed up, we ran through and started the screwing in and fascinating the uh, diagonal hull strapping. We got most of it done yesterday. We had four straps on the port side here to finish up. Uh, so we had enough done that when Thad got here yesterday, we could just get to work with him, which was what our goal was. And today we tacked in the last of these bronze straps first thing in the morning. And now we're going to get to work on the garboards. So yesterday we took one of the basically veneers that we ended up slicing off these boards when we took them down the road to the sawmill to get them resawn, And we used that as a spiling batten. So we clamped that along the back rabbit down the boat and used that and ruler and pulled off a bunch of measurements so that we could get the shape of the plank. And we're not going to go into crazy detail on spiling right now, so if you don't kind of follow or completely understand what we did, don't really worry about it. Thad kind of came and blew through it with us, and we're not even 100% sure exactly what Thad did in some ways. Um, but we're going to be doing a lot more spiling down the road. There's at least 20 planks per side of the boat, so we're going to do a lot of spiling, and we will cover that in a lot more detail and more concisely a little later down the road. Uh, so with Thad's help, we got the first garboard roughed out. So the next stage for that is to get it backed out so that it'll fit that curve on the boat. And before we do that, we want to use it as a template so that we can get our other garboard for the port side made up. Uh, and the boat should be symmetrical. The plank should be almost identical on both sides. I won't say identical. We're not that good. Uh, but they'll be really close. So we can take one and pull the pattern off it for the other and be within spitting distance, as Grandpa would say. Uh, the other thing we had to do today is scarf up this little bit of plank onto the end of that one 
because uh, it wasn't quite long enough and the piece that we had run through the thickness planer earlier for it when we resaw it and thickness it we found some defects inside it we didn't really like so yesterday before thad took off we went out to the wood pile and grabbed another board and milled that up and when uh, Casey gets here to give us a hand today, we'll throw him on scarfing that. And Alex and I are going to work on getting this plank backed out. So maybe we can at least do a test fit today. It'll be a lot of work. These really big wide planks, there's a lot of shaping to get them to fit onto the boat. Um, but it'll make the boat a lot stronger. And these are by far and away the biggest, widest planks that we're going to be putting on the boat. So after these, everything else should seem like a cakewalk. On the end over there. Oh yeah, because yeah, we got this the... is gonna get cut here, and this is all the way back to here. Yep. So yeah, we'll be fine. And I'm gonna cut this back a little bit because this undercuts. But I'll just make sure that we orient that scarf correctly, and we'll get rid of it. Not a problem, but we got plenty to play with. Anyways. To start the backing out process, Steve measured and marked the amounts needed to be backed out along the frames as well as the distances from the rabbit to the top of the back rabbit. Since we know the whole back rabbit is fair and at a 90 degree angle to the rabbit, there is no curve and thus no need for backing out. Sixteenths, half inch of backing out. <laughs> it's a little bit of work to do. <laughs> so this is this is not square. This right. is not. Square. This line here is square. Right. Got so it. we'll cut that off, and then let's see this. bit of a check in the end there. Steve got Casey set up to work on cutting the scarf for the port side garboard. And we moved on with backing out. The next step was to lay a tape measure along the entire rabbit and record the exact locations where each of the previous measurements were made. And next, the measurements were transferred onto the plank, one mark for the depth to be backed out, and the other shows the top of the back rabbit. necessarily want it right on that edge. Yeah, no, because this plank is still a little wide. Okay. Okay. But when you want to be, you know, not too far from that edge. Mm. Line it up like that. We pulled measurements off of the rabbit here. And we got the height of the back rabbit, and we got how far we need to back out at each frame. We transferred that to the plank here. So this is how far we need to back out, and this is the straight part in the back rabbit, and this is where we need to back out. So now what we're gonna do is take some saws and just cut some kerfs that go almost to this line, 
and almost to this line. And they're just references so that when we come down with the power planer, I don't have to keep looking at the side for the line. I can see the saw curves. And as long as I see saw curves, I know that we need to go a little bit deeper and I can just go until they disappear. And then we can put the plank on and get a test fit and see how much farther we need to go. But these are basically just making reference lines for us so we can go down and do it faster and easier with the power planer. Tightening on the bottom or top? Tightening on the top. Okay, line of fire. Okay, whoop, good. Uh, give me one crank on the bottom. It's starting to look like a plank. <laughs> it's starting to look like a plank. Hold it for however long that takes the twist. You got it. You got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there we go. You <laughs> did <laughs> Give me a couple on the top. <laughs> yeah, give me another one. Okay, whoop, whoop, yep. We're like starting to move the boat. Honestly, the gaps are small enough that they're all cockable. Right. But I'd like to clean them up and make them a little bit tighter. So after a few adjustments following the first test fit, we oiled all the surfaces and put the plank back on the boat. We'll have to fight a few more rounds with the clamps to get it right where we want it, and we'll let you know how that goes next week.
Thanks for watching. Cool. You want to clean up or are you leaving things as they are? As they are. <laughs> do you mind? Go for it. I am physically too tired to go do that. You guys are doing all the work. I was sitting here running around with a camera. <laughs> I don't know.